Here we go. Here we are. Welcome, everybody, to Sam Roberts. Now, it is once again lonely Friday night, and there's only one way to properly experience Friday nights at its loneliest potential, and that's right here with Sam Roberts. Now, welcome, and we take lonely to the next level with the one, the only... Hot dog! There he oh, is. Hey, there you go. hey. Right, mute it for a second. Mute it for a second. Hot right. dog is here. It says an alert just came up that says, "Are you playing music right now?" No, dog. That's just how I talk. That's just how I do my thing. After three long weeks, finally, hot dog has come back to sam roberts now oh yeah yeah you weren't here uh uh uh, before i was on my my uh national tour uh yeah that's right uh hot dog a lot of people don't know this hot dog is actually amish and has been on rum springer he's been on rum springer you know about rum springer hot dog a lot of people don't know this i didn't know this yes yes even (laughs) hot dog was unaware that he's been on rum springer that's when they allow the 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 Amish when they right before they become full adults, you know, they're not quite okay. not a not a girl, but not yet a woman. This is what the Britney Spears song was about. It was about Rum Springer. They allow them to go out into the world and experience all the wonders that the world has to offer with the extra, which to me really shows the balls, like the confidence, the BDE that the Amish have, because there really are. So many incredible things that the Amish don't have access to, but they go, no, 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 no. Being an Amish is so great that we're going to go ahead and let you see what life is like with everything. And I guarantee you're going to come back to us to live without all of it. And so many do. I, I, I've never been able to understand it. And I came back to, to the loneliness. That's I right. saw the world for what it was. You, you had your, your, lonely, your lonely rum springer. Right. And I said, okay, go hang with people. Hell, vacation with people. Do whatever you want to do, because I guarantee you, you'll realize that the lonely life is the better life. And look where you are. Came running back. Hey, it's better. It's better. That's why we're all here. Uh, of course, every Super Chat will get read. That's the best way to communicate. If there's uh, topics we don't hit or, or topics that you'd like to expand upon with us, every Super Chat will get read. On tonight's show, the loneliest night of the week, every super chat will get will get acknowledged. Thank you, hot dog, for legal <laughs> reasons. We should say that every super chat will be acknowledged. I can't promise that every single word will be read, but an acknowledgement is still is still good. Um, and we are we're a little lonelier tonight, hot dog, because we are one person less. In this world, of course, I'm talking about the man, the lift, myth, the legend. The legend. O.J. Simpson. Uh, Orenthal James Simpson passed away at the young age of 76 this week. Uh, O.J. was, of course, known for a great many things. Running over 2,000 yards in a single season with the Buffalo Bills. Being a Heisman Trophy winner. An incredibly famous national spokesperson for Hertz Rental Car Company. It changed the way advertisers looked at things. I mean, everybody from a generation remembers OJ running through the airport. Uh, star of the Naked Gun trilogy, one of the great comedy trilogies of all time, and in a, in, a, in a way that people looked at this athlete even differently when they saw the the funny bone that OJ had. Uh, a beloved member of the NBC broadcast team for a period of time in the early 90s, you know, covering Super Bowls. This is this is somebody that we went to. Uh, a correspondent for the It Is What It Is podcast, also a beloved role that O.J. Simpson had. Uh, a Twitter celebrity. This, is, this guy had a real online presence. Uh, but maybe beyond all that, uh, most famous for being responsible for the... Uh, well, for the double murder of Nicole Brown Simpson <laughs> and Ron Goldman, you know, he, uh, well, he killed him. So that became really something that he was very well known for on top 
of all that other stuff in almost it's, a way. You know, you look at the whole catalog at the end of the day, and you, and it's a wide spectrum of activity, but ultimately, uh, none of it measured up. You know, OJ was. What's interesting about OJ is not only even more than good at football, he was a fascinating person. And even more than fascinating, he was a horrible human being. So that's kind even, of yeah, where we're at. More than good at football, he was good at murder. Getting no, 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 no. Because he wasn't he was good at getting away with murder, is what he was really good at. Because yeah. honestly, I mean, he made it so clear that he was responsible for those murders. I mean, it couldn't <laughs> have been more clear who was responsible for that crime. And I say that because even if you look at legal documents, while technically in a criminal court of law, he was found not guilty, which is, I would say, well, I mean, when you, you add to his accomplishments, uh, he'll go down as to probably what is the most befuddling judgment in any criminal case in American history. I mean, this thing was a slam dunk, uh, but he still was responsible in a sense because a civil trial said, even though a criminal court found you not guilty in this civil trial, the evidence is so overwhelming that we're going to find you financially responsible for this double murder. Um, it's in civil trial, kind of like play court, though. Well, it is, except in this case, uh, it was millions and millions and millions of dollars. Um, mm. And it was a judgment that he was responsible for these murders. The only real uh, shame in this is that we won't find the real killer now. OJ had said he was going to dedicate his life to finding the real killer, and his life is now over. So apparently... He won't find the real killer and we will just have to live under the assumption that the overwhelming amount of evidence is true. And uh, he is clearly the real killer is what I, I'm kind we of. We will with. we will never really know. Well, I would disagree with that. I would say we really know. I, I, I feel like he got a little that you would not be this confident in saying all this uh -huh. if he was alive a week ago. Well, because, no, because I thought because maybe he's going to maybe he's going to turn up with him. You know what I mean? Maybe he's going <laughs> to find him. That was my thing. If he didn't find him throughout his entire life, then it's like I have no reason to believe that this that there he was out there. But while he was alive and on the hunt for him, while he was searching, I had no reason to, you know, doubt his searching abilities. We're not even throwing an allegedly anymore. Well, I said he was responsible. I okay. said he was <laughs> I said he was responsible and I'm just going by the letter of the law he was indeed responsible for the double murders. If you ask my mother and I did mm -hmm. because a lot of people are curious. They know that I mean a lot of people, my people in my generation. I thought you're a little younger than me so you might not be, my you know. And well, no, actually just a little unfortunately <laughs> for you. Uh but for my generation like this is the first massive court case that took over media you know i mean the menendez brothers was big and there i mean there were big cases but this was the first trial that really took over everything like they were they were interrupting what was it the nba playoffs or the nba finals to put a picture in picture so that people could watch the the chase the ford uh, the, the white ford bronco case uh chase going down the highway this is this is something that everybody was paying attention to to the point that they would make you like we would watch it in school under the guise of we're learning how court cases work except in reality it was just because all the teachers were so obsessed with it that they didn't want to miss any of it so they figured they could just watch it at work and make us watch it um it was one of the very early cases where like 24 hours the entire trial was broadcast and it made court TV like court TV was, was nothing before the OG reality case. TV. I, it did make reality TV. It was the first time you started really people go, it's interesting. Cause you go, uh, you know, people credit the Kardashians and Paris Hilton with being the first people that kind of became celebrities for not really doing anything. No disrespect to any of those parties, but I think that that's a fair statement. 
Ironically, Kim Kardashian's uh, father, Robert, was, of course, attached to this as he was uh, a member of the, the dream team, one of the people uh, that were on OJ's defense team as a lawyer. But really, one of the first reality show stars uh, that that came out of this and became famous for nothing was Kato Kalin. Kato Kalin was a massive Who's that? star. Kato Kalin was the aspiring actor who lived in OJ's guest house. But you know, if you Google him right now, hot dog, you'll recognize this photo, I'll bet. He was like, he had the actor face, he had the long blonde hair and everything. And, and- Oh, yes. Yes. yes, yes. He's only famous because he took the stand at the OJ trial. And he was like, yeah, I was living in OJ's guest house. And they were like, what happened that night? And OJ was like, I don't know, I was at the airport. And he was like, well, I, there was somebody, somebody literally knocked into the air conditioner. It was right outside my wall. Like somebody ran behind OJ's guest house. And it doesn't appear that there was a breaking and entering of, of any kind. So people really assumed that was probably OJ himself, which, you know, might have been circumstantial evidence at best. But I mean, it was there was just massive amounts of DNA at the crime scene that was far beyond. Not enough, apparently. No, 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 no. More than enough. Huh. More, <laughs> more than enough. Um, Fred Goldman, of course, uh, uh, the, the father of Ron Goldman, who in 1995, after OJ was found not guilty, uh, Fred Goldman is the guy who dedicated his life to making sure that nobody ever forgot what OJ did. And my, I mean, dude, if anybody is a man of their word, it is Fred Goldman. He, he, he was OJ's shadow forever like he's the one who after the civil trial in the civil trial i think that oj uh was found to owe the goldmans like 33 million dollars or something like that and then like with a 10 percent interest rate for every year that he doesn't pay and the goldmans are like yeah we never got any money from oj like not a dime any money we got from oj it's because we had to go after him and hunt him down so right he oh the I was reading an article that this one article said that he may owe the Goldmans like a hundred million dollars or something like that, which means that still yes, like he hasn't paid him anything, and it's not like you just die and your debts go away. So anything that's in his will, unless it was like locked up in some kind of trust for his kids, they're saying that that's going to go through some kind of probate court, where the courts are going to decide if. Like what, if anything, the kids get and how much of that inheritance is actually going to end up going to the Goldman's Fred Goldman is kind of Go screwed up that like you could win a case like that. And the court can say that this person owes you millions of dollars and he could just continue on for years and it's, years without paying it. It's how's crazy. It's so nuts. Like every video OJ put out, he was like, look at how well I'm living. Like I'm doing great. You know, I've got this beautiful house. I'm going to go golfing. Like, oh, yeah, it's nuts that you could just lose like that for something as serious as what OJ lost for. I'm just not going to pay it. Yeah, I'm no, I don't think. Yeah, I'm just what if I just don't? They're like, well, I guess. Yeah, OK, that's fine. <laughs> like, like, OJ, you know, at the end of his days, too, he was getting very cocky with the whole getting away with it thing. I mean, he was literally I said it in my little uh, in my little obituary. But he was literally the football correspondent for Cameron and Mace's podcast up until a month ago, like last season. He was their correspondent, and they we would call in and give football tips. And Mace and Cameron would just slip in like <laughs> references to the murder and giggle <laughs> when OJ would fall for it. It was I think I think the last brilliant. OJ clip that went viral from that show yeah. was uh, the one about him. Uh, making jokes about confessing. Did you see that one? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> I, 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 I DM'd it to you on Twitter just in oh. case if you want to pull that one. That, that, my, that's the last parting gift of what I OJ. Did. Well, yeah, I'll get it. Uh, uh, let me, let me open that up and I'll, I'll, I'll get to it for sure because <laughs> it really was. I mean, just a beautiful thing. Um, just having the time of his life. Yeah, so Fred Goldman is the one who, when OJ was like, remember he put that book out, If I Did It? Yeah. So Fred Goldman found out he was putting this book out, and he was like, you can't 
not only are you not paying us, but now you're going to profit off of this. Like that's insane. So the Goldman's ended up getting the publishing rights to the book. So any money the book made would go directly to the Goldman's. And they also, as people that held publishing rights, had the right to like change it or stop it. Mm -hmm. They could stop it from going out entirely. And instead of stopping it, they, they only changed one thing. They changed the cover. The original cover had a font that was very equal. It said, if I did it, OJ Simpson. And the Goldman's were like, we just have a new cover design and then the book can go out <laughs> as is. And they made the if very, very tiny, very tiny. It and then inside the eye, yes. almost transparent. <laughs> almost transparent is right. And then the I did it in giant letters. So that just so when the book went out on the shelves. But I mean, that thing was so crazy. We played the interview on Jim and Sam that they finally unearthed because they realized, you know, I think like, uh, I don't remember, I don't want to say which publishing house did it because I I fully don't remember. But the publishing house uh, ended up like backing away from it because they got so much bad publicity because people were like, do you understand what this is? Like, do you right. understand what he's doing? evil he did this interview that they ended up not airing and then i don't know two decades later fox was like i think let's just air this interview and i watched it it was an incredible interview because as you're watching this interview he's giving like and hopefully it's on youtube somewhere he's giving these hypotheticals and as he's going he's forgetting it's a hypothetical he's going and then i did this and the you lady you mean, and then you would have done that. He goes, right. Anyway, right, uh -huh. anyway. So what I did was, you mean what you would have done was? Yeah, sure. Whatever. So, <laughs> like, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. What are you? <laughs> I mean, it was incredible. Um, yeah. I'm like, I looked at the cover of the book. Yeah, it's if I did it with the if inside of the eye, super <laughs> tiny confessions of the killer. And then in the bottom, it says, with exclusive commentary uh, by the Goldman family Good. titled, He Did It. <laughs> <laughs> Good for the Goldmans. I mean, that's exactly what you should do for this scumbag who even, like, he wouldn't, to the last day, He not even on his deathbed, would he be like, all right, okay, I did it. I'm sorry. Like, on your deathbed, you can't apologize. You're, it's like, your kids know. Your kids, everybody knows. Yeah. You know what I mean? Zero remorse. Right. Everybody knows. It'd be like hot dog if your dad was like, you know, I'm your stepdad. You'd be like, I know. You know, I, yeah, I know. We'd... You're going to have to wait until you're on your deathbed to tell me this. I, I, I've known for a while. Yeah. I put, two, I put two and two together. Yeah. I mean, it's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the kids would be like, we know, Juice. We know. <laughs> we know what you did. Everybody does. Um, I mean, it's amazing that this thing not only swept the nation in 94, 95, but also like one of the best docs ever was that five part ESPN 30 for 30 that they did that just went over everything step by step. That is probably, it might be my favorite documentary because the way it like, it starts by telling the story of, of OJ and how important he was in the beginning and how important he was as a black American to be stepping forward and being in that role model position and doing things that people like him had not done before and, and breaking barriers everywhere. And, 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 you know, how everybody even knew in caught like his come up through college and his, his first wife. And then he goes to Buffalo and at first he's miserable and he's not performing well. And then all of a sudden he catches fire. He's setting records. He's going nuts. He leaves football before people think he should really leave football. He learns to be a broadcaster. He starts in movies. He's a little shaky, but then he finds the naked gun. He's going boom, boom, boom. And then boom, 1994 knocks on the door. And the whole world sees him as he truly is. I mean, they start going over, you know, the 911 calls. These hideous 911 calls that he was just like, they were like, no, he was a, it's not like this was a one-time thing. He was a monster. Right. You know? And then, you know, even after being found not guilty, still ending up in prison anyway. Oh, that, that again, there's two heroes in this world. Fred Goldman 
and the judge who could have given him six months in jail and gave him like nine years. <laughs> and it was, I forget exactly, like the exact amount of days was symbolic to something. Like it was exactly All right, yeah, I remember something. That. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what it was, but that judge knew. She was like, we're never going to get this. We have him. He was found guilty. And that's the other thing. Like you had to know, no matter what, for the rest of his life, he needs to stay on the straight and narrow. Because if he ever gets put in front of a jury again, they're finding him guilty. No matter, like, look, they're from they're leaving here with something, okay? Like he's getting found guilty if he goes in front of another jury, and they found Not him even a ticket violation. No, no, because well, I mean, I I wouldn't leave my house. Right, exactly, exactly. Because the judge will be like, "This is very atypical. You're only ten miles over the speed limit, but we can give you up to three years in jail." That's what we're doing. What, <laughs> what? for ten miles? I mean, I was legal? going, I was going sixty in a fifty. Yeah, it's. It's three years in jail. It'll be a year and a half with, with good behavior, but I doubt. The books here don't say I can't give right. you 10 years. Then the, he goes he goes to the parole board, and he's like, you know, I've been an ideal inmate. And they're like, right. But Brentwood, you know what I mean? Brentwood. <laughs> yeah, we're going to not give you parole. What? what? <laughs> you guys are going to make me pay for this forever, huh? Well, you were supposed to. You were literally supposed to go to jail forever. So, yeah. Which, which technically is a little... A little corrupt in the judges, like game, in right? like in the because sense you, that they're, they're letting to... right. They're they're letting their 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 morals, like they're actually being a human being instead of just like exactly. Right, but right, right. right. But guess so what? We're all okay with that, even though we know. That we, but technically, that's wrong, right? But also, but also, we know. Yeah, <laughs> you yes. know what I mean. It's like. Because he would go like, I mean, nine years seems a little steep for, I mean, he didn't really kidnap anybody. He just put him in that bathroom. And it's like, yeah, but nine years for the other thing is light. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. We just all agreed. All right. That's fair. You know, at one point he said he wasn't going to, he would not go to LA. He would never live in Los Angeles because he may, he never knew he might be sitting next to the real killer anywhere that he goes. And he does, he can't be held responsible for his actions. To which that's I right. said, to be fair, during the murders, you weren't held responsible for your actions. So I think it could be okay. Why would you be now? Right. So there's that five-part ESPN doc, which is unbelievable. And then Hot Dog, as you know, we've talked about this many times. I have watched the full season of OJ American Crime Story, like yes. multiple, multiple times. Just watching John Travolta walk around. OJ, OJ, <laughs> like, like David Schwimmer, just juice, juice. No, what are you doing, juice? What are you doing? Oh, uh, I still haven't watched it, bro. I, I might not. I might now in celebration. It's the Good morning. It's you said the wrong word. It's it's the best. I mean, I'm telling you what to do with this weekend. You watch the ESPN five parter. You watch American Crime Story, the full season. And then you sit back, light up a cigar. Get yourself a little glass of whiskey and put on a montage of Norm McDonald weekend update jokes. Because let me tell you something about Norm McDonald. He was so far ahead of this. To this day, you put on Norm McDonald OJ jokes and then sprinkle a couple Michael Jackson jokes in there just because he was a genius, you know? Not, I'm talking about Norm. Right. <laughs> but light up a stogie and enjoy a montage of Norm MacDonald, O.J. Simpson jokes because he was just a master on Weekend Update with the O.J. jokes. It was incredible. Now, was it obvious before the case was closed to America, you know, because I was just a wee little kid. Mm -hmm. Was it obvious to everyone that he's super guilty, like even before it was close to wrapping up. Yes. Yeah, so like, my mother, I'll never forget this. And I've, I've told this story before, but my mother would walk around the house because again, I'm, you know, this is 95. I'm 12, you know, 11, 12 years old. All right. So you were just a wee lad yourself. Right. I'm a kid, but I've seen the naked gun movies. I was raised on those movies. So I thought, you know, OJ, I mean, talk about a charming guy. Well, he could do no wrong. Certainly not a double homicide. Am I right? And I'll never forget going to my mom and going, mom, I mean, I remember watching the Super Bowl in like probably either 93, probably 93, 94. OJ was a sideline correspondent. He looked great in the NBC blazer. 
I said, Mom, is OJ, did he really do it? And my mom looked at me and she said, Sammy, that man is guilty as sin. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm saying if 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 all if all Mama Rob Mama Roberts if Mama Roberts knew then yeah yeah people knew you know it's not like she was okay. way way ahead of the curve on this one people people were aware I'll tell you what it was also a boon for the industry of bootleg parking lot T-shirts the OJ juices loose parking lot T-shirts were some of the best bootleg parking lot T-shirts that you'll ever see to this day they go for hundreds of dollars today because it became a party like people would tailgate outside of the of, of of the courthouse and they'd be there every day and this trial lasted for the trial lasted for months and months and months the jury deliberated for like seven hours or something like that but the trial lasted for months and every day there'd be throngs of people outside the courthouse and they all like they, they were all these like the juices loose t-shirts that were that were huge. And then you know, pictures of OJ all over it and everything. It was a it was a big, big deal. Did you rock an autograph juices loose t-shirt? Would I rock it? Yeah. Or you know, have it as memorabilia. Maybe not rock it. <sighs> Would I own it? Would, yes. Would you own a juices loose t-shirt and put it in the basement? Yes, I, yes. It's not, well, I don't know about that. Yes, and I'll tell you why. Number one, it's a celebration of 90s culture. And you know how I feel about 90s culture. OJ's trial was a cultural moment in the 90s. And I love cultural moments from the 90s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, this is key. It's a parking lot bootleg, which means the money doesn't go to OJ. But if OJ was like, let me sign that for you. Okay, then I don't know, because then people would ask, <laughs> where'd you meet OJ? And I couldn't even be like, well, I, this was before the trial. They'd be like, that's a t-shirt <laughs> from the trial. It's a reference. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know about the signed. The signed one would be tough. I'd probably go unsigned, to tell you the truth. Right. Cause, Hang it up on the wall. Because that's one signing. where even, like, there are people who are like, oh, no, I'd still get a picture with him. No, like, in, in theory, you're like, oh, you know, wouldn't it be, you know, kind of ironic to have him on as a guest? Wouldn't it be? But like, I'm a, I'm a human being that actually has some semblance of moral fiber. And I think when push come to shove, I'd be like, that is a murderer who destroyed multiple families, his own, the Goldman's and the Simpsons. Like he destroyed families and oh. killed two people. Like I can't. I just can't, I can't even get behind that ironically. Mason Cam thought otherwise. But, but look, also, I'm not a hater. And mm -hmm. when Mason Cam did it, I was like, yeah, good for them. I, I'm, I'm down with this. And you know what it is? Because I, first of all, like they always said, it is what it is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And second of all, I always felt like when they did it, the joke was kind of on him. Right. And I appreciated that they were doing that. So since you brought it up, and I know why you brought it up, you <laughs> really I love the clip. You really want me to play this clip, and I will. <laughs> I will, hot dog, because you're a hundred. I'm learning from you. I'm learning. I'm learning. You know, I'm learning the broadcasting. And yeah, it's a nice little segue. Let me see if I'm the mass stuff. Let me see if I can get it on my on the big uh, not Samtron three thousand. Okay, because there it is. All there right. we go. All right. Let's see here. We'll use it against them. Jack said men shouldn't open up to women because right. they'll use it against them. He said whenever something go down, they're going to throw it back in your face. Do y'all agree? Mm -hmm. OJ first. OJ first. Uh, <laughs> when you see, like they're kind of laughing at him. I don't know what he's talking about. Emotional. Is he talking about confessing? <laughs> Is he talking about confessing? Uh, no man, don't don't confess. Here, Cameron, realize Like he's really I going there. Your blind eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so leave me out of the confession. Yeah. <laughs> May oh, says no. his hands on his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Now we gotta leave me out of it. Look how comfortable he is. Just, just saying it. It's almost like he doesn't realize, like, you understand what you're saying, Juice, right? No compassion. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Mace is as much as Ma you know who Mace used to work with, right? Yes. <laughs> Mace has been through it. Okay. You're talking right. about literally Puffy Combs, P. Diddy's right hand man. Yeah. Mace deserves to have, you know, a life led however he wants to because he's probably been through it quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like OJ on his face. And I mean, I think there's a lot of CTE as well involved with OJ. I, I always have. Because mm -hmm. he has the vibe of he's not 100% sure why they're laughing so hard. But the emphasis on confession. Are you? And they didn't even say confession. He's like, are you talking about confessions? Because if so, never, right. never, never make a confession. And they're like, what the hell are you saying, dude? Yeah, that's not that's not a CTE brain. That's just rubbing it in people's faces i mean with pure joy this was the this was the tweet april 10th our father orenthal james simpson succumbed to his battle with cancer which i don't think even think people really knew he had cancer yeah. um he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren uh during this time of transition his family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace i mean nope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grace grace no, dude, like you don't just get that. You don't just like it's not like no matter what, you get grace. You like you could do whatever and you're gonna get some grace. You're not even getting privacy, dude. Uh uh. Nope. <laughs> nope. Um from the Simpson family. The Goldman even has Fred family members willing to like uh be associated with him. Well, Fred Goldman released a statement, and in the statement he wrote uh Ron's killer has passed away. That's how he started the statement, which I love. You know why? You know why I love that? Because number one, he's not backing down. And number two, he's putting the emphasis on his son. OJ destroyed this man's family. He took his son away from him. Do you understand? If somebody took my son away from me, I would 100%. Sam Roberts now would become the show where I try to be get everybody to understand that this guy that did that is a world-class piece of shit worst thing that could ever exist i mean every day every day this would go daily and that's what i would do every day and then he good said start. Uh, good start to it. then he said uh uh the uh, oj's death is quote it's no great loss to the world <laughs> which again good for him by the way in february this was oj's last uh Twitter video, because like I said, he had become a Twitter celebrity. Hello, Twitter world. Yeah, a lot of memes coming out, a lot of people saying goodbye, Twitter world. Uh, this is what OJ said. Hey, X World is me. Yours X World. Truly. Boy, what a beautiful day it is here in Las Vegas. Even though the game is indoors, it wouldn't have mattered, but still, it's nice to have a beautiful day like this. Hey, let me take a moment to say thank you to all the people who reached out to me. Uh, uh, my health is good. I what? Mean, obviously, I'm dealing with some issues, uh, but hey, I think I'm just about over it, and I'll be uh, back on that golf course. Yeah, you hopefully were. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks. Hopefully, but it was very nice hearing from you and hearing those good, positive words. He also hit a lot of his Twitter replies because a lot of them were not as positive words. Uh, they were dealing with they, you know, people talk about the murders a lot. You just um, can't move on. It's interesting though that his last public address. He says his health is good, which to me, that's the ultimate irony because OJ uh, left this world the same way that he became his most famous, which is uh, lying. Just completely lying about everything that was going on. So, you know, what's insane. What's so, like, that? You, could, you would still see like clips of OJ out and about and like he would still be like, Hanging out with women. Celebrity is a like, weird thing. Like, it doesn't matter what you're famous for. If you're famous, like, it's one thing on Twitter. It's one, like, on a show where, he, like, he's not in the room here. We're saying what we're saying. But, like, celebrity is a very weird thing. And OJ, for all the wrong reasons, whether it's famous or infamous, is one of the most well, was one of the most well-known people on the planet. So it's like...
there are a lot of people who forget their own scruples when they're encountered with somebody that's that famous. They don't hot dog. They don't know how to act. Crazy, Insane. crazy, crazy. Absolutely nuts. Young white women. They loved him. They to loved the very him. end till the very end. Um, so yeah, I don't know what you would say. You know, you, um, for almost anybody else on the planet, you would say rest in peace, but it's rest just in piss, rest in piss, rest in piss is what you would say. <laughs> and now, now the hunt is on for who becomes the new most hated person. Who is the, uh, Oh, who is the human? Like OJ was one of the rare humans that even in this world of, of kind of being nicer to people than we used to be, uh, it was always fine to just completely be hateful towards OJ Simpson. Someone's got to pick up the mantle. We, the last couple of years, maybe the last 10 years, we've mm -hmm. lost a lot of the infamous serial killers, yeah. you know, like Manson and all that stuff. Well, we but it's OJ. more so, it's more so with OJ because he got like, I feel like this is bad news for Casey Anthony. You know, she's oh. not nearly as famous as OJ because she wasn't famous before the trial, right. but it was a big trial and she got away with it. And even when they put out the documentary where she was like, no, see, I'm pretty much innocent. Everybody watching it was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> so, so I don't think, I don't think the hatred, I don't think she evokes that much hatred you, these days. People don't think about it. You like, you'll hear the name. She and did like, that oh, to yeah, her, that, her kid. That per it was yeah. her kid. It was her own child. Right. But I just mean like people, it's just not something that people like think about. Like you say the name and you're like, oh, that case from like 10 years ago or whatever. Well, okay. We got a couple, we, we have people, multiple okay. people in the chat <laughs> are bringing up Diddy. I think uh, maybe this is the worst timing of all for P Diddy for all of this to break just as OJ dies. It's like, because people were already like, people have been just kind of generally annoyed by P Diddy. Like he's an, he's obnoxious before and now that like all of this stuff is coming out about him it's like oh no 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 this goes way beyond that so maybe we'll see how it pans out for him diddy how may you... take the mantle because r kelly's in jail right r kelly is in jail so that's like what's there in... hog tie and he doesn't know how to hog tie people anyway come on damn that much i mean that's gonna go down yeah that's gonna go down as the worst interview of all time i think like I'm hog tie people R. Kelly's interview was more incriminating than OJ's interview where he confessed. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, there's also the Prince Andrew interview. So there are some very incriminating interviews out there. There are. There are. There's definitely a tournament of those. Yeah, we'll see. My question, well, unrelated, my question real quick on the Diddy stuff. Are we canceling his music? Well, are we you, there yet? When you say his music. I think because, it's because you know he's background for a lot of stuff. So does that count? His production or his solo work? Because you know, I mean, letting go of Diddy's solo work, I think is going to be kind of piece of cake. But well, yeah. I think the the real question you're asking is about Biggie, correct? Right. right. All the stuff that he's on, you know, and with the and I mean, he he or produced, right? He produced Juicy. I think we no. I, yeah, I I think it's easier. I think if he's not his voice, he's not like background vocals. I take that. Uh, okay, you know, but he's, he just, says that on everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I told you that we won't stop. But it's like, it's no, not, dude. No, stop. not is that who I think it? Oh no. Oh no. You should stop. Yeah, you should have stopped. Well, only time will tell. We'll see. We'll see. Uh. We got uh, uh, some some film news. That's I mean less important than this, obviously. But yes, we got the trailer. The trailer dropped for Maxine this week. Are we excited about Maxine? Hot dog. Do we know about Maxine? Never heard of it. Okay, Maxine is the uh, third movie in the X trilogy. This is Ty West's trilogy, of course. First, he puts out that movie X. X takes place. In 1979, uh, yeah, 1979, and it's uh, it was the movie Kid Cudi was in it. Obviously, Mia Goth is in it. Uh, it was uh, one of the first big uh, horror movies that uh, Jenna Ortega was in. 
actually. It was before Scream, before uh, Wednesday, before any of that stuff. Jenna Ortega was in it. But, I mean, it's basically the story of this this group of of young people that are going out to, and their plan is to make an adult film. They have a film camera and everything. They're going to make their own adult film, and this is how they're going to make their fortune. And they're staying at a, at a guest house on an old farm they don't know much about. But very creepy things start happening. The, the family, the, the, the man and woman that live in the farmhouse that they're on, that the guest house is on their property, are very, very weird, very, very creepy, and very, very old, like really grossly old, like not well kept up old. And they also have a pond that an alligator is in. And let me tell you something. When a movie like this shows you an alligator early in the film, somebody's getting eaten by that alligator. Chekhov's nope. alligator. Right. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so uh, 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 in this movie, and this isn't a, a spoiler show, uh, this movie goes through the course of what it goes through. But you don't really get a ton of backstory on, on why these old people are the way that they are or how they got to where they are until the credits roll. And the end credit scene is this weird technicolor trailer for this movie called Pearl. And it's almost like, it almost looks like, uh, like, like going so far back as like the wizard of Oz, when the wizard of Oz turns into color and there's music involved in everything. And there appears to be different scenes from this movie. And again, it stars uh, Mia Goth, but this time Mia Goth is playing a very young version of the old woman who owns the farmhouse. And it says, like, Pearl is coming out in, like, seven months. And the news breaks that in secret, because this was shot during the pandemic, that in secret, at, right after they shot X, they were just like, hey, what if we did a prequel? And we told this woman's story, this creepy old lady's story that lives in the farmhouse. And so that's what Pearl was. So Pearl becomes the prequel to X, where uh, Pearl... Uh, this this now takes place uh, in 1918, and uh, 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 and 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 we see Pearl having the same dreams that we saw the lead character Maxine have in in X. And so we watch what this looks like in 1979. We watch what this looks like in 1918. We watch Pearl uh, uh, hit her breaking point in that quest for fame. So good. Then at the end of Pearl, little trailer comes up. 80s music is playing. 1985, it just says Maxine with three X's and it says coming soon. And you go, oh my God, it's a trilogy. So Maxine is the sequel chronologically to X. It takes place six years after the events of X, 67 years after the events of Pearl. And all three are obviously somehow connected because this character, Maxine, is the character that stayed in Pearl's house in the movie X. But what it is, is this horror trilogy that ultimately is about the insane things that people will do on their quest for fame. That once that that hunger for fame takes over, that there's really nothing that you won't do. Hot Dog, X and Pearl are two of, I love these two movies. X and Pearl are incredible. If they can stick the landing on Maxine, this is going to be, if they stick the landing, which is a big if, but I think they can do it, this is going to be one of the greatest horror trilogies ever. And, mm. and you're going into masterpiece territory for Ty West. Ty West is the writer director of all these. And he's working with Mia goth on all of them. If Ty West sticks the landing on Maxine, we're in masterpiece territory. And we're going to be looking forward to a trilogy breakdown when it comes out. Yeah. You bet we will. Oh, you bet we will. We're going to go through the whole story. Now, there's a lot of things that have people excited. This movie now, it's official. It comes out uh, July 5th of this year. July 5th is when it comes out. So this will be a celebration this summer. Um, 
there are people excited. Now, the cast is pretty amazing. Not only do they have Mia Goth in it, but they also have Halsey playing a role in it. I got real annoyed because you know who's in the trailer? Giancarlo Esposito. <gasps> we literally just talked to him. Like the interview, I just put the interview up on this channel today. Except when we did the interview, it was a week before this trailer dropped. I would, I mean, it would have been nonstop. I would tell me it's everything. Probably, it's, probably, it's probably for best that you didn't know that he was in it. Because it would have been like no breaking bad questions, no questions about his current project. Like, I got to know. I got it. Nope. <laughs> did we see, like, tell me more about Maxine? And as soon as he dried up with the Maxine, I'd go, wow, did you see X? Let's talk about this movie X. Did we see Pearl? What did we think about Pearl, Giancarlo Esposito? You could have, you had me at John Carlos. As soon as you mentioned he's in this movie, I'm wait, in. Wait till you hear this. John Carlos in it. Halsey's in it. Bobby Cannavale's in it. Bobby yeah. Cannavale don't miss. Okay, that's one thing about Bobby. Bobby don't miss. It looks like we've got a lot of people breaking down this trailer, including myself in my head, because I'm just like, you know, boring my wife with the details she's trying to take care of a newborn and i'm like no 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 because if you look at this scene <laughs> stop, stop, stop what you're doing right now yeah come yeah on, come, back, come back around let me show you let me show you she's like i didn't see any of the other two movies i'm like oh they're great i'll show them to you so <laughs> <laughs> so can you imagine having this energy around like you do it for an hour a week like this is the always the energy this is this is it and you never know what it's going to be on which day. <laughs> no, you never know. No, no, you really don't. What are we obsessed with now? <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> uh, Fabster uh, on the chat's asking, do you watch them chronolog in chronological order or release order? Would you, what do you recommend? Uh, release. Yeah, release. Because that's the way the director made them. Now, I'll go back. Now that I've watched them in release order because I saw them both in theaters. Like, ASAP when they came out, but I'll go back and watch them chronologically. When we discuss it, when we break down the trilogy, which is going to be a doozy, uh, we're going to do it chronologically for sure. We're going to start okay. in 1918 and go all the way to 1985. But yeah, for your first viewing, start with X and then get your questions answered in Pearl. And then it'll get you ready for Maxine. And maybe after you watch Pearl, you watch X one more time just to get you revved up for Maxine. That's probably what I'm going to do. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, so it looks like based on the trailer, and again, these aren't spoilers because I haven't seen the movie, based on the trailer, people are excited. And I think they might be getting over excited because I watched uh I, I I read an article. This was an actual article, not a YouTube video. This was a real article, I promise. Okay, all right. <laughs> I know was it a tweet <laughs> might have been a tweet, <laughs> might have been a caption on an Instagram reel, but whatever, <laughs> it was words. Um there are people who think that there's a shot at Jenna Ortega in this movie. Jenna Ortega, in it? yes, because this is a sequel to X. I'll tell you, a little spoiler, but whatever. Jenna Ortega, unfortunately, does not make it through X. Yes. However, there is a scene where we see in 1985, Maxine is walking around what is clearly like the Universal Studios backlot, and the Bates Motel is there you know, from the movie Psycho, which has been part of Universal Studios' backlot tour forever. But she looks up at the Bates Motel, and in the window, she sees the ghost of Pearl. And so just based on that, there are many that are going out there and going like, well, if she sees the ghost of Pearl, then the ghost of Jenna Ortega could be in it too. <laughs> it's like, I, I mean, I guess. it could. I guess. They're like, you're saying like there's ghosts, right? Would... You're saying there's ghosts? Jenna you're Ortega ghosts. This one. She's a huge star. I don't see why you wouldn't put that in the trailer. I would probably put in the trailer. I think, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'd probably put in the trailer. Um, it looks as though, uh, coming off of this, because in X, Maxine uh, hasn't done anything. She's doing this porno movie because she wants to be famous. More than anything else on the planet, she wants to be famous. She wants to be a star. And this porno that they're all shooting together, she wants that to make her a star. So it looks as though Maxine has become uh, somewhat of a star in the adult industry. It looks as though in the six years between Maxine and uh, X that she's continued on that role and made several adult films in the 1980s. And she's trying to break into the mainstream. So the way she breaks into the mainstream is through uh, horror movies. You can see her in the trailer. She's auditioning for a horror movie. And I think 
that it, it, and then you see her get get a horror movie but it's a sequel like you see on the clapboard it's the puritan 2 and so already you're thinking like this is probably not the biggest movie in the world right it's right you know and in the 19 in 1985 you're talking about a peak time where cheap horror movies were being made and a lot of times going straight to vhs you know like it was just like in the 80s definitely like in 1985 yeah because it would be it would it would go to video rental stores all right i i keep thinking vhs was like a 90s thing no no no, no. i mean owning vhs was a little bit more 90s like vhs tapes were not affordable in the mid 80s i don't think they would they would cost a lot of money because they were designed to be sold to rental stores but you'd go and rent videos like crazy in like 1985. Wasn't before VHS uh, Betamax? What was that? Wasn't yeah. That a video thing? Yes. Yes. And it was like, it was a little bit before VHS, but also happening simultaneously. Like it was, a, that was kind of the format war Betamax wanted to be. And Betamax was actually better quality than VHS. But uh, I believe the way it went was like the porn industry adopted VHS. So people were like, yeah, this is what we're going with. That's always a win the war. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go with this. <laughs> Um, so there is a scene though of the, ma of, of a massive premiere. Like it looks like man's Chinese theater, you know, and that's the, you know, what man's Chinese theater is, it's the theater that is like, you know, like the times square of LA. I drove you through it when we were out there for WrestleMania where mm -hmm. all those like, you know, people you don't trust are in costumes outside that right. movie theater with the handprints. Yeah. It looked fun. Right. That's man's Chinese. So. Uh -huh. They uh that looks like there's a premiere for this movie at that theater, but I'm watching, I'm going, I don't think so. Because part of this whole trilogy is the delusions that these people have about fame. Like they start having these crazy delusions. And when the delusions don't come true, that's what brings them to their breaking point. So I'm thinking this could be a delusion, but who knows? I don't know. Um, but then it takes a twist, right? It takes a twist because uh there's murders happening. And they bring up the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, who in 1985, that was happening in Los Angeles. And so what was going on in real life with the Night Stalker is a part of, of whatever is happening in this movie, which I like because in, in Pearl, the, the flu epidemic of 1918 was happening. And it was part of, it was wrapped up into what was going on in this movie, which was very interesting because it came out right around the pandemic time. So it was like, oh, okay, I see what we're doing here. Yeah, I like what we're doing. I like when they do that, when movies don't forget about like the historical stuff that's going on in those time periods. Yeah, but I it's like- not like a historical movie. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I like it when they do that, but I also like when Tarantino does it. And he does it like they used to do it back in like the Grindhouse days where it's like, yeah, this is happening. And you're like, oh, I know how this goes. And Tarantino's yeah. like, no, we changed that. <laughs> Twist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're watching Inglorious Bastards, and it's like, oh man, they're not going to make it out of this theater because that's not how Hitler died. And Tarantino's like, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hitler gets blown up. Dude. Yeah, that's that's what happened. You go, oh my god, they're gonna. This is much better than real life. They're gonna kill my favorite characters because the Manson family, like, they didn't they didn't die. And it's like, right, but they didn't knock on a door with a guy who had a flamethrower either. So <laughs> it's awesome it's awesome i hope they do something like that here um but yeah so that and people are going through this trailer trying to figure out who's going to be the killer you know there's going to be a killer right i think it's going to be maxine's going to be the killer because pearl was the killer in pearl so i feel like maxine's going to be the killer in maxine it's the same i mean you're you're talking about you I, I think thematically if you look at it from 1918 to 1979 to 1985 what we're looking at is a trilogy about a story that over time does not change that that toxic unhealthy desire for fame exists or, in so many of us or infamy because it doesn't matter once you want fame ask oj it's all the same thing and what happens when a person doesn't get it what happens when somebody has locked their entire existence on the power of positive thinking and they've read the secret and they're going to be famous and then they don't get it. What happens? And that is the story of these two movies so far. I think this third movie too. And I'm very, very excited. 
Very Thanks for spoiling, spoiling the whole thing for us with your theory crafting. I don't call it's not. I'm fantasy book. Don't say theory crafting. <laughs> that's the that's the fizz. It's a fantasy bookings for wrestling only. No, it's not. Not here. It's all wrestling <laughs> here. We're fantasy booking. That's it all what comes we back do. to wrestling. That's what we do. It always comes back to wrestling. And then we also, of course, got uh, news coming out of, uh, I think it was coming out of CinemaCon that they're redoing the Blair Witch Project. Like Lionsgate has signed a deal with Blumhouse and Blumhouse is going to remake like a ton, like a whole bunch of Lionsgate classics. But you wouldn't remember this hot dog. But I don't have a ton of faith in a Blair Witch remake. Not that it won't be good. Like, it'll be fine, I'm sure. But the whole thing about the Blair Witch Project was that it got big because they convinced people that it was real or that it might be real. And they you didn't know it was a work or a shoot. Right. Or a worked shoot. You didn't know. A bunch of jabroni marks. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but, yeah, and they didn't say that this was an acted piece of cinema until it had already been in theaters for like a couple of weeks didn't like they uh not have and i I haven't watched the movie but didn't they like not include credits in the movie just to keep that illusion or yeah there were no credits there were no famous people in it like yeah so carpet right so it just kind of appeared any homework so yeah that's what um and they made a sequel i think they made like two sequels i think they made a remake remake and like 2016 or something like that and it's like they're f- cool it's like a cool witch movie in the woods but yeah found footage movies are tough if you you need the suspension of disbelief and if the suspension of disbelief is reliant on the fact that this might be real it gets tough it's like the sixth sense right like there's a whole bunch of us that are like this is single-handedly the greatest movie we've ever seen because the twist is so good but once you find out the twist, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's a decent movie, but you know. But at the same time, Paranormal Activity did just fine. It did. And it was good. At least the it, first one was good. Okay. It was good. I love it. I love the Paranormal Activity. I mean, I love the whole franchise. You want to go on a franchise breakdown? I didn't get past one. I, I don't think I've ever watched two or whatever. But that's really my point. Were. Because even if you know, you. You saw the gimmick. Mm -hmm. So the sequels, it was all like, they had a great twist in the second one. Right. They did have a great twist in the second paranormal activity. But yeah, once you started doing sequels of it, it just didn't, it didn't hit the same. And if you did a remake now, like it's not going to hit the same because you know what it is already. You know what I mean? It's tough. But not not to say that Blair Witch is going to be a dud. It just won't have the same. I mean, I'm sure they're not looking forward. They're not assuming they're going to have the same impact. Right. They want to, they have a a bottom line budget. They're probably going to make it for very little money. And if they make 50 million, they're like, cool. It worked. That's what we need. Boom. Bob's your uncle. Uh, All right. You know the deal here on Sam Roberts. Now I told you at the beginning of the show, if you've been listening since the beginning, thank you. If you haven't, thank you for listening now. Uh, uh, Every super chat will be, Acknowledged, acknowledged, acknowledged. We're acknowledging our tribal chief. Every super chat will be acknowledged uh, in our post WrestleMania edition of Sam Roberts. Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe and do that whole thing. Uh, let's see. Not Sam Lehman. I was so happy to meet uh, Not Sam Universe's precious little boy, Hot Dog. Not Sam Lehman is the gentleman that you got to meet hot dog at our live podcast, which thank everybody. Any of you watching that went to our live podcast in Philly. Thank you for watching. Um, Hope you enjoyed WrestleMania. Yes. You better have all that money you dropped. Not Sam Lehman. We're going to get the final total on our Patreon zoom, but uh, he had up front. He had already spent like 80 grand. How is that even possible? If well, you, even if you want to, he went to every show and sat in the front row. And if you really watch WrestleMania, He did get his money's worth to an extent. Like if you're going to, like he did, he, you can see him in the front row of every show. He is in at the, at the WrestleMania, you know, they do a video package at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. He's in WrestleMania night one, like going like this after Cody loses, like he's all over the weekend, like all Mm -hmm. over when Cody won, 
and he's going around the crowd. Like I watched it back. And when Cody's going around the crowd, like he stops and, and said, and like, you can see Lehman and his wife freaking out for him. So like, there is all this, all these moments Lehman is a part of for all of eternity. My question is, was Lehman wearing a not Sam wrestling hoodie? No, he wore like his not Sam stuff to the not Sam show. And it's like, that. <laughs> yeah, great. That does me a world of good. Thanks, Lehman. <laughs> You know, no, no, no. I don't need night two of WrestleMania. What's like a week later, everybody's kind of agreed. Yeah, that was the best of all time. No, that's fine. Just wear your Cody shirt. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Uh, let's see. Uh, inward C word. Am I bugging or does Jim look like Dracula flow Graham? I'm not 100% what that is, but I don't, I don't think you're bog. I don't know. Uh, bad guy Rob, what are hot dogs thoughts on, on AEW playing the security uh, video? You think that was a good idea? So stupid. <laughs> and I was like so open to it. I was like, all right. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, good, it's a cheap, you know, cheap trick to get a little bump, but let's see how they parlay it. And it, and you see the footage and it was like a little scuffle. <laughs> it wasn't anything. Adrian writes in, are we having another Trump Biden election? Yeah, people really can't believe it. I it's yeah. April. Of course. What do you think is happening? I know, but people like I think people are having trouble wrapping their minds around it. Like, there's no way. Right. There's no way. Yeah. It was, yeah. Ob it was obvious like two years ago. How I know. Shock? Because it's like it's only gotten worse on both part for both parties. Like. This is the worst version of the election that we got four years ago. Uh, yeah, four years ago, and that one wasn't great. And that one was supposed to be once in a lifetime. Twice in a lifetime. <laughs> Sometimes you go twice in a lifetime. That's actually a great point. Uh, Gamer says, uh, I'm glad that OJ can rest in peace knowing that his wife's killer is dead. Yeah, that's the, that is the silver lining. That at least he knows that his wife's uh, killer is dead. Of course, Mike D with the classic. Goodbye, Twitter world. Uh, B Herb, F Mary Kill for Sam. Okay. Football mm. star OJ, naked gun OJ, Twitter nice guy OJ, and for hot dog, who are the worst three Bond girls? I mean, mm. for an F Mary kill, honestly, I'd probably kill football star OJ so that before any of this happens. Because if you kill football star OJ, he doesn't evolve into murderer OJ. So I'd kill him early, and that way, like, even the domestic disturbances don't happen. Uh, which leaves me with Naked Gun and Twitter Nice Guy OJ. Um, well, I'm not marrying Naked Gun OJ because, you know, we know what happens. So that's one and done. And I guess I'll marry Twitter Nice Guy OJ because, I mean, what's he going to do now? You know, I mean, he's feeble in his Twitter stage. Right. Uh, hot Dog, worst three Bond girls. Uh, I can't think of the third one that I would say is a bad one, but uh, I'm going to go with Plenty of Tool. From Diamonds Are Forever. Plenty her plenty of tool? Plenty O Tool. Plenty O Tool is what you get on Saturday nights. <laughs> <laughs> so I hated I hated her golly accent. And then okay. I'm gonna go with the Bond girl. I don't know her name, but uh from the last movie, No Time to Die, just because I didn't feel the chemistry mm. between her and Daniel Craig. And all of a sudden he has a child with her and he risks and he kills he sacrifices himself for her we just met her that seems dumb right stupid okay that so those are my tip okay bad guy rob what's hot dogs twitter he's so popular that i can't find him anywhere no he's not that he's popular it's that uh he doesn't think i know anything about branding and won't take any of my advice ever <laughs> hot dog what's your uh what's your easy to remember twitter account shay Marte. i've upgraded it because before it was Tormenta two six three, and you had you thought that was stupid. The Tormenta. <laughs> the whole, it's not supposed to be said like that. <laughs> and how do you spell that? Because people, I mean, they're Shay Marte. A Y M A R T E. Okay, Marte. I think people would get Shay. That's like the fourth spelling that I would try. <laughs> yeah, it's not even the right first letter. Maybe I should just switch it to like Shay, like Shay Stadium. Yeah, that's what I would do. Honestly, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Uh, 
Bob Shafty, finally OJ can rest easy knowing that his wife's killer is dead. I love that you super chatted in a joke somebody had already super chatted in. <laughs> uh, too bad Norm McDonald didn't live to see this day. That is the ultimate irony. Why would Norm McDonald leave this planet before OJ? Uh, Charlie in the confession, uh, him had to be a had to be uh, AC, right? Oh yeah, he said uh, Charlie would have been his accomplice. You think it was AC? Could have been for sure. That was always my assumption. And not a clue. You got to do your OJ history. Wow, I'm obsessed with it. Uh, among other things, obviously. Luke Sky Wanker, have you been following CinemaCon news? Only briefly, right. only like the, you know, I got the the uh, Blair Witch news. I watched the Joker uh, uh, trailer. We'll see. I'm avoiding it. Is it good? Does it look good? Yeah, I mean, look, it looks good in the sense that, I mean, you can't really tell anything about the story. There's a lot of, you know, there's, he doesn't, they don't want to say it's a musical. They're saying it's a story that involves music, but they never want to say anything's a musical. They pretended Mean Girls wasn't a musical. They were just like, they 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 would prefer that you believe that they made the exact same movie again than that they made a musical. So it's a risk. The first Joker is great. Joaquin Phoenix is great. Gaga is really good at singing. And last time she was in a movie where she sang, she did good. Remember the... Uh, Shallow, shallow, la 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 lows. Remember, not the one where she it looked like everyone was. Everyone thought she was hooking up with Bradley Cooper. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It's the opposite of Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone. <laughs> but yeah, if I missed any, uh, uh, hit up a super check because I'd love to talk about it. Let's see. Are there any more? Are there any more? I'm scrolling down now. Yep. Yep. Oh, good. From PFG TV. Sam, did you cover the Abigail trailer yet? Uh, Melissa Barrera and uh, Giancarlo are in it, directed by the same guy as Ready or Not and Scream 6. I have not. I did watch the Abigail trailer. I don't have my notes in front of me. I haven't covered it, but if that's something you want us to cover, uh, we absolutely will. I would just play it right now, but for some reason, I always get like copyright notifications when I just look at trailers. It's like it's a commercial. What do you what copyright? Oh, another one from Luke Skywanker. Have you seen Godzilla X Kong? It's great. I never saw Godzilla X Kong. I want to. I want to see Godzilla X Kong, but I didn't see the Godzilla before that. Godzilla, what was it called? Like the Jap like the Japanese one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. forgot the name, but I heard a lot of good stuff about it and I still haven't seen it. Me too. I'm uh I'm yeah, I'm behind on my Godzilla movies for sure. But I definitely want to see that, especially because they put Michael Cole and Corey Graves in that trailer for it. I stopped watching the Godzilla movies when they fucking had Brian Cranston in the uh, trailer and he was only in the movie for like five minutes. They got you? They got me. Finessed. God damn it. <laughs> uh, Iliago, best horror movie to watch from the past year. Watch Thanksgiving, Talk to Me, Late Night with the Devil, and First Omen. Uh, Thanksgiving was awesome. Um, there's a the movie that's on... Shutter, the Argentinian movie. Let me open up my app. So I'll tell you exactly because I'll give you the exact uh recommendation uh on what I think uh it should be. And let me open up my letterbox because I'm sure I uh made mention of it to myself. Um oh, unless I didn't. Let me see. Maybe I didn't do it. Maybe I'm behind on my letterbox. Damn it. There's a. Uh... Maybe I'll open up Shutter because now it's really bothering me. <laughs> Let me just open up the. Uh... I'm going to open up all the apps. Uh, when Evil Lurks. That's your recommendation if you want to. Or you can watch Barbarian. But <laughs> when Evil when Evil Lurks is a is a great movie from this year. That I, I mean, I saw it this year. That's the movie that Corbin was talking about on the uh, horror podcast that we did a few months back. We should have started replacing. We, you should just watch Barbarian. You should just watch Night Two, WrestleMania Forty One, or WrestleMania 40. Forty. I feel like that's the new easy. I mean, you'll have a good time. Yeah. Anybody that tells me they don't like wrestling, we're sitting down and watching WrestleMania Forty Night Two. I I I was telling my roommates, I was like, I know you guys don't watch, but you guys better watch that main event at least. Yeah. Even the opener. Even the opener. 
What was the opener again? Drew Seth into oh, into, yeah, 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 into yeah, Priest. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. It's a new era. Poodle Riffic. Renaissance. Nope. Just a new era. <laughs> uh, Poodle Riffic says uh, salmon hot dog make Friday nights awesome. Love you guys. Love you, Poodle Riffic. Uh, I think. Oh no. Nope. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bo Shafty, are you watching UFC 300 tomorrow night? I probably will, you know. Uh, I mean, UFC does such good shows, and I feel like 300 uh, will be great. Um, yeah, I'll probably watch it. I'll probably see it. And Anyone finishing the story? What's the... Uh... I mean, that's my thing. You know, we're all one company. We're all one happy family. We don't need to compete. Right. Oh, my God. Wow, yeah. You Isn't work, that wild? You work for yeah, that's crazy. You talking about what's, what's up with these tickets, bam? You got some UFC tickets you can get us? We'll see what we can do. No, <laughs> no, I, no, I don't have, but yeah, that's I mean, yeah, that's my company, homie. That's my company. That's I I've not thought about that till just now. That's crazy. I'm lit, right? Yeah, that's a flex, dude. <laughs> Wait, don't so don't you and Jim technically now work for the same company and for two different companies? Yep. That's cool. Yep. All these that's companies cool. are chasing both of us down. <laughs> All of them. Uh, Bo Shafty again. Do you think Event Horizon ever gets a remake? For sure, and that's when I would watch a uh, a remake for. Somebody is asking me what my letterbox is. I can't tell you. I gotta go through it. I really thought I was keeping it updated, but I don't even know what that means. What is that? It's a it's a social media app where you like can list the movies that you've seen, put a rating with them. You can review movies. Uh, it's for cinephiles. For nerds, cinephiles <laughs> is the is the term. But I can never, I can never keep up with it. I might have to do some work. I updated my LinkedIn for like the last, first time in eight. For what? Bro, oh, for... yeah, I'm getting hit up all of a sudden. Okay. But literally, I looked at it like people were hitting me up to like join my LinkedIn, and I had like a ponytail in the picture, no beard. It said I host Sam Roberts show. <laughs> like I was like, which which photo did you update your LinkedIn with? I don't remember. It might have, it might have been from this weekend. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, think yeah. so. I was telling Hot Dog, I try to get mad at this guy. And I'm like yelling. He knows the tricks. Oh, this hot dog, he drives me crazy. He knows all the tricks because he does some shit that is dumb. And I'm yeah. yelling at him. And then while I'm yelling at him on text, he just sends me photos that he took of me that he didn't send me yet. And I, I like go, oh, All right, let me just change my Instagram <laughs> profile real quick. Like, let me, all right, all right, it's Damn, fine. Don't you it's think fine. you look like, dope as fuck in this photo yes i do yeah. as a matter of fact i do <laughs> what about right. this one no that one's also good yeah that one's... <laughs> all right we're good we're fine oh all right guys uh oh we got to these are not super chats but i will put them up because it's uh contributing uh let me see Can, yeah oh see, i didn't put i didn't mean to put that one on but it's still a good one Sam should start gambling on the NFL next year. I don't know if I'm ready to fully gamble, but uh, I'm definitely going to be next level fan going into the next season for sure. I'm down now. We still we still can't get you into the uh, NBA, right? Can't? Uh, no. No? It's not too even, many games. Not even, like the, not even like the playoffs? It's so... I'm either in or out, and it's just so many games. But there's so many good stories. There's there's more. I mean, every time there's like... You talking about John stories. Morant? That, yeah, <laughs> there's always something going on. I mean, I'll look that's at, what it's almost just as good as the games. I'll look at the hell rate. I, I'll look at the I'll, I'll look at the uh, controversy. OK, uh, this person asks, uh, when is satisfying coming back? I believe this week it should be coming back. We'll get together and tape. I was already on the phone with Nicole today. We miss each other tremendously. So uh, in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to Satisfying Pod on YouTube and uh, watch all of the old episodes while you're waiting for the new episode. Bo Shafty, did you like the Hellraiser remake? I did not yet see the Hellraiser remake. I have to, I have to get on it, but I will. I appreciate you guys hanging out on this lonely Friday night. You got five styluses. You might as well use them. Cheers with you later.